The Great Barrier Reef is one of the world's most cherished natural assets. Stretching more than 2,300 kilometers along the northeast coast of Australia, it's the largest natural feature on Earth and the only living thing seen from space. Vast, intricate, and so precious, the reef is home to thousands of wildlife species and it's the richest, most complex natural ecosystem on Earth. Bold, beautiful, and unique, the reef supports the greatest concentration of life found anywhere on the planet. Come with us on a fascinating journey as we explore the wonder and magic of the Great Barrier Reef, a living treasure. The Great Barrier Reef is a living, breathing organism, the largest in the world. Yet its life force comes from the smallest of animals. Billions of tiny creatures called coral polyps, which are the heartbeat of the reef. Covering an area of over 344,000 square kilometers, the reef is home to a huge variety of animals. And it's an ecosystem teeming with life. Despite all its energy, sometimes even the Great Barrier Reef stops to catch its breath. And when still, it's equally mesmerizing and magical. This peaceful coral colony is hosting a huge group of turtle mothers, taking a well-earned stopover on an epic birthing journey to a very special destination. Remote and breathtakingly beautiful, Rain Island is where they're heading. This isolated barrier reef outpost is the largest and most important green sea turtle nesting area anywhere on the planet. It's an environmental icon and one of the most prized and protected wildlife sanctuaries anywhere on Earth. And the reason it lures so many mums? It's where they were born. Instinct brings them back here to give birth to their young. The sheer number of pregnant mums making the annual pilgrimage is breathtaking. Over 60,000 green sea turtles converge on the reef's pristine waters. They arrive from all corners of the South Pacific. Powered by strong flippers and streamlined shells, and navigating purely by instinct. At any one time, this two kilometer stretch of sand can host over 5,000 females. And the occasional male who comes along for the ride. Mating usually happens at sea, but can continue in the shallows. And this mum's not impressed. This frisky fellow has glued himself to her shell with his sharp claws, and he's in no rush to get off. 
He can hang on for hours like this, even a full day. Finally, he musters the energy and leaves. Male green sea turtles never set a flipper on dry land. These shores are the sole domain of the ladies. Rain Island is not only popular with green turtles, it also attracts one of the Great Barrier Reef's most ferocious predators, the tiger shark. The turtles are one of the tiger's favorite meals, and Rain Island is one of their most fertile hunting grounds. Strategic hunters the tigers lie in wait for the turtles to arrive, stalking the island and hunting further out to sea. This turtle's long journey is almost over, but she's got one last hurdle to overcome before she reaches the safety of the beach. Tigers spot their prey and move in for the kill. Frenzied and frightened, she flees to deeper water. She's faster than the sharks, but she's no match for these cunning hunters. Suddenly, the tiger strikes. And the turtle is at the mercy of the shark's powerful jaws. The jaws are so powerful, they are capable of smashing even the hardest turtle shell. The shark rips and tears with the flipper an easy target. The Great Barrier Reef can be as brutal as it is beautiful. Just like the turtles battling for survival, living corals are also in a constant battle, but with each other. Sometimes the living reef is its own worst enemy, because while some coral species are friends, others are foes. Whenever two different species of coral come in contact, it's a war, and they fight for territorial dominance. They repeatedly fire and withdraw microscopic tendrils at their enemies. It's their way of devouring their opponents, literally. It's a fascinating and intriguing turf war being played out right across the vast expanse of the Great Barrier Reef. A 
Out at sea, one of the living reef's deadliest threats is looming. Cyclones. Brutal, destructive, and devastating. November to April brings the monsoon season, and the cyclones roll in to threaten the coral coast. Winds reaching speeds of up to 250 kilometers an hour wreak havoc, whipping calm waters into swell that can destroy coral. The destruction continues on land. Heavy rain smashes World Heritage rainforests. Swollen rivers send fresh water cascading towards the Coral Sea. Nutrients from the land are also washed out to sea, feeding plankton, which in turn feeds one of coral's greatest enemies, the female crown of thorns starfish. Notorious for destroying coral. The starfish dines by wrapping her stomach around the coral, sucking the life out of the polyps until only their skeletons remain. With hundreds of toxic tip thorns, she's an imposing predator. And along with cyclones, the crown of thorns starfish is one of the Great Barrier Reef's greatest threats. She's constantly on the march and has a history of invading in armies. Every year, each adult female consumes 10 square meters of corals destroying paths of colorful living polyps, leaving only a deathly gray in her wake. Like coral, the sentinel crab shares a common dislike for the crown of thorns. In an effort to protect his home, this defiant guardian crab takes his claws to the crown of thorns like garden shears to the stem of a rose. Apart from crabs, coral has another strong ally, a snail, but one far removed from your typical garden variety. This is the giant triton. Growing up to half a meter long, he's one of the largest marine snails in the world. And his favorite meal is the crown of thorn starfish. He hunts using a strong sense of smell and finds the scent of the female crown of thorn starfish particularly alluring. It tempts the monster snail from his shell to launch his grisly attack. Holding her down with his massive bulk, he injects a toxic venom, paralyzing her, but not killing her. He likes his starfish live and dining at leisure. The giant triton snail is the coral reef's best friend. Back on Rain Island and thousands of female green sea turtles make their way up the beach, ready to give birth. It's been a long journey and this mother is exhausted. While the sun may have set on her ocean voyage, perhaps the toughest part of her journey is yet to come. Her grace in the water is lost on the sand. Here, she's awkward. But she's not alone. For these noble ladies of the sea, a beach walk is no easy stroll. Every one of them struggles. 
but for new mums, it's hardest of all. Weightless in the sea, this is the first time in their lives they experience the force of gravity. Step by lumbering step, these committed mums plot up the beach, each in search of her own nesting space. Their progress painstakingly slow. This mum finds the perfect patch of sand to lay her eggs. She now digs a hole for her nest. Her dexterous back flippers handy shovels. At last, she's ready to give birth. Soft shells that won't crack tumble into the nest. More than 100 eggs, two or three at a time. Her next task is to secure the nest. More hard labor. Again, her versatile flippers become her spades. This extraordinary birthing ritual takes about an hour. And finally, her job is complete. She heads back to the ocean, leaving her eggs hidden in their sandy chamber to incubate. It'll be about six weeks before her delicate hatchlings will emerge into the world. Growing up to 15 meters long and with its distinctive markings, the whale shark is the largest fish on the Great Barrier Reef. She's here with other whale sharks to source the rich feeding grounds of the Coral Sea. The migratory sharks travel vast distances to get here, where they gather in groups for seasonal feeding. The reef's tranquil and pristine waters provide a perfect sanctuary. Suspended just below the surface, feeding is a magical sight. With one gulp, she sucks in a huge volume of water. Using highly efficient filter pads to separate the plankton from the water. Unlike other sharks, the mouth is conveniently located at the front of the head, making surface feeding easier. These gentle giants of the sea are a rare but very welcome sight on the Great Barrier Reef.
these majestic sharks are visiting the reef in more and more numbers and in larger groups. Given their endangered status, it's an encouraging sign. Elsewhere on the Great Barrier Reef, an extraordinary ritual is about to unfold. Here, a crowd of surgeon fish have gathered for a lunar party. Surgeon fish synchronize their body chemistry by the phases of the moon. When it's new, they spawn. Single females scamper to the surface with a swarm of males in hot pursuit. The ladies release eggs, the men sperm. Their moonlight ritual catches the eye of an unwelcome intruder who lurks dangerously close to their party. So absorbed in their mating frenzy, they lose focus on what's lurking. Their reproduction dance may be enthralling, but it leaves them exposed. The inquisitive shark moves in, but luckily not for the kill. Thankfully, he has other prey in mind and leaves the surgeon fish in peace to continue their captivating lunar dance. The stage is set for one of the most spectacular events on the reef. We're about to witness one of the greatest mass synchronized events on the planet. A great barrier reef miracle. Heralded by a full moon. It always happens at night in the hottest months of the year. Yet it looks a little like a wintry underwater snowstorm. This dazzling pageant is coral polyps spawning. This magical show happens just once a year and lasts only a couple of days. stars the tiny creatures that create the Great Barrier Reef's most famous feature, its brilliant maze of corals. There are a myriad of different ways the living reef reproduces, and they're all a miracle of nature. all part of the rich cycle that sustains life on the Great Barrier Reef.
This mystical animal was once the subject of legendary tales told by ancient mariners. And he's as strange looking as he is rare. A large cloud of sand is a sure sign that a dugong is here and busy foraging for food. Using his large snout, he filters the ocean floor for his favorite seagrass. With a ferocious appetite, he can devour up to 40 kilos in a single day. Looking more like an elephant than a sea creature, he glides effortlessly to the surface for air. He can hold his breath for up to six minutes at a time, with a typical dive lasting just a few minutes. A casual yawn reveals two large, powerful tusks. Descending for another feed, a couple of unwelcome remora fish are along for the ride, despite the dugong's objections. These freeloaders of the sea attach themselves to the dugong, where they eat leftover meals and parasites. Unfortunately, the love affair is not mutual, with the frustrated dugong anxious to rid himself of the pesky intruders who overstay their welcome. He's had enough and tries to shake them off making clever use of the ocean floor to brush them free once and for all. The remoras take the hint and decide to leave for greener pastures, leaving our dugong, affectionately known as the sea cow, to continue grazing in peace and quiet. When you are traveling vast distances in the open ocean, finding a good meal is not always easy. This young leatherback green turtle spots an unlikely meal when a large jellyfish swims into view. She wastes no time devouring the jellyfish one tentacle at a time. With an inquisitive minky whale looking on, she goes back for more. Tearing flesh apart with her powerful beak. With a specialized digestive tract, the turtle is immune to its sting.
Finally, with a full stomach, it's time to move on and continue with her epic Great Barrier Reef journey. This shell looks friendly enough, but its inhabitant is one of the deadliest on the reef. Also, one of the strangest looking. He's the geography cone snail, and what makes him so unique, instead of a tongue, he has a lethal harpoon made for killing. Stalking at night, he has his prey in his sight. Hunting by stealth, he moves in on a sleeping fish. If patience is the key to fishing, then this snail is the master. He opens his mouth wide, releases an anesthetic that stuns. The fish skips a heartbeat as she inhales. Her peaceful slumber is about to be rudely awakened by every fish's worst nightmare. Cone snail engulfs her hole before his harpoon tongue strikes like a hypodermic needle. Her death throes agonizing and frightening. Mother Nature may not have blessed the cone snail with speed, but he's still one of the reef's most lethal predators. This dozing fish is about to become a second victim. This time to a relative of the geography cone, the smaller striated cone snail. She's not fussy about the type of fish on her reef menu, as long as the size is right. And this unsuspecting fish is the perfect mouthful. Slowly, she moves in for the attack. And in an instant, she stabs the fish with a lethal harpoon. The fish has no chance and within a few seconds, it's devoured whole. Life on the Great Barrier Reef can be a fragile, sometimes perilous existence. This strange sound has put world defense forces on alert. Concerned it's coming from an enemy submarine. In reef waters though, this odd metallic echo has a far friendlier interpretation. It means 
the dwarf minkies are back in town. These majestic whales are not official residents of the Great Barrier Reef, but it's their second home. They travel here every Australian winter for a couple of months of vacation, to play, mingle, and breed. In the same way we're passionate about whale watching, the adolescent minkies delight in people watching and seem to genuinely enjoy the interaction. Strictly controlled, this is the one place on Earth where people can interact in this up-close and personal way with the minkies. Dwarf minkies, as their name implies, are relatively small in the whale world, but still mammoth in the sea. Growing up to eight meters and tipping the scales at five to six tons, yet they move with amazing grace. Almost as if they're floating on air in these pristine waters. These repeat visitors are curious about everyone and everything, yet they don't give away too much about themselves. Minkies are the ocean's mammals of mystery. No one's quite sure where they're heading or even where they've come from. Scientists believe some of the minkies that visit here are from Antarctica, and when they reach the Great Barrier Reef, they travel about two and a half thousand kilometers from its southern end until they congregate and settle around the ribbon reefs in the north. Anything beyond that, the minkies like to keep secret. Dusk is a magical time on the Great Barrier Reef. Beckoning fragile turtle babies into the world. Their mother has long since returned to the ocean. And they're now all on their own. Guided only by instinct, which steers them towards the sea. The solitary existence of these ancient creatures begins the moment they break free from their sandy hollows. It's a long and lonely crawl, thwart with danger. These tenacious turtles will do it tougher than all the rest. Their sandy nest has turned to sodden silt, an extremely rare and devastating occurrence because they emerge blinded by mud. This turtle is the leader of the pack. Brave, adventurous, and so vulnerable. 
Running blind, even the smallest obstacles become a major hurdle. The slightest sand ripple catches him by surprise. All of a sudden, he flips over and it's now a life or death situation. With every ounce of strength, he somehow manages to right himself. He's a fighter, but any further slip up from here will leave him vulnerable to an army of hungry terns who patrol the skies. Against all the odds, he conquers the mountain and continues with his perilous journey towards the sea. But for others, their journey will not be so fortunate. The somber reality of the green sea turtle world is that just one in every 1,000 babies will live to adulthood. It's simply nature's way. A fragile balance of life and death for all the Great Barrier Reef's residents. For every fallen hero, there's a heroine. Here, the cycle of life continues, as it has for millions of years. Magical, wonderful, wild and free. This water baby will continue her fight to survive in the seas. luck, she'll return to Rain Island one day, just like her mum. Navigating the oceans by instinct on an epic journey that will bring her back here to give birth to her own young. And the extraordinary green sea turtle nesting ritual will continue again and again. This is the Great Barrier Reef, a living treasure.